Hello there, and welcome back to Gracefield. I am so excited that you decided to take time from your day and your schedule to come back to my page, to visit with me, to show me love, and to hear the words that I have to say. I am extremely grateful, I'm thankful, and I don't take it for granted. Thank you. For all of my new subscribers and friends, welcome. My name is Christy and I am a wife. I am a mom of five and I homeschool my children. This is my 10th year of homeschooling and I have learned a lot on this roller coaster of life. So on this channel, I share the ups, the downs of life. But the purpose of me being here is to encourage, motivate, and inspire you in your faith, in your home, in your homeschool, and in your life. So if this sounds like something you're interested in, make sure you hit the subscribe button. This is the most wonderful time of the week. Who knows why? Yes, because it is Sabbath prep time. <sighs> okay, I've got a lot I want to talk to you about. So let's go ahead and start. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Yes, we will be glad in it. I will walk by faith even when I cannot see. And I hope that encourages you on today. You will walk by faith, even when you can't see. So put your name in there and say that to yourself throughout the day. And I promise it will encourage you, Mama. You know, I've had some moments, if I am being honest with you, that I didn't feel like rejoicing or being glad at all. In fact, it felt like I was doing a lot of mourning and I had a lot of pain and a lot of grief and a lot of things that I just didn't understand, even though the scriptures tell us to rejoice and be glad in it. So I know that I am not alone in experiencing that it's not my current, but it might be your current. And I just want to offer a little bit of inspiration for you. Just in case it is. Somewhere from the ages of about five till our current age, we began to lose our joy. We began to lose excitement and our lives changed. There's a lot of reasons. A lot of it is family dynamic. A lot of it is um, society. A lot of it is cultural. A lot of it is circumstances. Like now we have mortgages. We have jobs. We have comparisons. Some people don't have jobs. So there are a lot of things. We allow the things and situation to take our joy. And after some time we realize, wait, this thing has occupied more time and space than I realized, more time and space than I wanted, and I want to make a change. And then we're not really sure how. So we think that maybe it's getting to a certain size, right? Like maybe it's the pre-body weight. Maybe it's the college weight. Maybe it's the high school weight. Then we think, oh, well, maybe it's the spotless homes. Maybe by being a great housekeeper. Maybe by being a great wife or by being a great mom. Well, 
Maybe we think it's by having luxury items. Maybe it's by having a certain status. Maybe it's by having certain assets and cars and clothes and shoes, material things. These are things that we think bring us joy. And we think that these are ways that I can find my joy back and I can be happy again. And I'm all for being in shape. I'm all for being the best that you can be. I'm all for living the exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think bless life. I'm all for all those things. But here's the deal. True joy comes from the Holy Spirit. That the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control against such things. There is no law, according to Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Now, I'm not 100% sure if this order matters or not, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy. So for me, I don't think that we can really have joy apart from the Holy Spirit because to walk in the Spirit means that the Holy Spirit lives in us and we are abiding in Yeshua, in Christ Jesus, like the vine abides with the tree. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Without me ye can do nothing. That's what John 15 and 5 says. So, the reality is true joy comes from the Holy Spirit. And that makes the difference. When I think about joy, I think about the Apostle Paul. In all things, give thanks. Joy is an internal emotion that does not change regardless of your situation. That sounds like all things to me. So, in the good times, we have joy. But also in the bad times, we still have joy. Because He will not leave us, nor forsake us. So we don't seek to be happy, because happiness comes and goes. Happiness is dependent upon something else. If and then, if you do this, then I'll be happy. Joy is a period. It's the end of a sentence. The joy abides internally. So, I am curious. When you think of joy, what does that look like for you? And how can you have the joy that you once had, the joy that you had when you were younger, the joy that you had when you were a child before circumstances and situations, before media and people, told you what something was supposed to be, what's supposed to look like, what it was supposed to feel like before 
life didn't go the way that you wanted, dreamed, planned, hoped for, or imagined before the tro- troubles and storms and obstacles came your way. What does joy look like for you? You know, when I think about how we take care of ourselves, and when I think about the way we take care of others, when I think about how we speak to ourselves and how we speak to others, it's really interesting. And I really wonder if we took care of ourselves the way we take care of everyone else, Would we feel joy? Would we feel better? Would our life change? What if we took guard over our physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual signs? What if we said, I'm going to protect these spaces, they're holy spaces, and the only things that can enter are the things that are significant. So when I was cleaning earlier and getting ready to make my video, the scripture, this is the day the Lord has made, I will rejoice and be glad, and it came to me. And as I began to edit the video and get ready to start the voiceover, I just felt um, the Lord leading me to joy. I thought, which is it? <laughs> is it joy? Or is it this is the day the Lord has made, I will rejoice in it. And then I looked up the definition of rejoice and I said, aha, it's both. Because rejoice means to feel or show great joy or delight. But since that's what's been on my heart all day, this is the day the Lord has made. I'll rejoice and be glad in it. Why don't I read that Psalms 118 before I go? This is clean with me. It's a little bit different. I didn't speed anything up. I think that's the problem. We want to speed things up. And we don't get to speed up anything in life. We just have to be patient. We just have to endure. We have to endure the process. So the rest of my house was clean. I already had cleaned up my homeschool room from our break. So that was under control. I already had the remaining clothes left over from my two laundry baskets that just needed to be sorted and put away. And so I took today to wipe the doors in the bathroom. I felt like by doing things before they get really dirty, before it's time, and just taking a few minutes every day to do something different just leaves you in a place that things can be well and on track and it doesn't leave you in one day trying to do every single thing because you've been working on it bit by bit here and there and so it's easier to manage doing small tasks with great joy so this room 
wasn't so bad. It looked bad. <laughs> but I was one, letting my bed air out. And there's a couple things going on here. My planner has arrived. I'm going to do a video on that. My shoes are in the corner because I have a video for that. And the dresses are there because I have a video for that. So most of these things are things that I've already folded that just needed to be placed in their areas. Clothes that I dried and just needed to hang. And the house is pretty much together. Psalms 118 Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let Israel now say, his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron now say, his mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord now say, his mercy endures forever. I called on the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a broad place. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? The Lord is for me among those who help me. Therefore, I shall see my desire on those who hate me. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princess. All nations surround me, but in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. They surround me. Yes, they surround me. But in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. They surround me like bees. They were quenched like a fire of thorns. For in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. You push me violently that I might fall. But the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and song, and he has become a salvation. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tents of the righteousness. The right hand of the Lord does violently. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord, Lord does violently. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has chastened me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go through them, and I will praise the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteousness shall enter. I will praise you, for you have answered me and become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Save now, I pray, O Lord. O Lord, I pray, send now prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you from the house of the Lord. God is the Lord, and he has given us light. Bind the sacrifice with cords to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. I'll give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. From my very first Clean With Me video, I tried really hard to make sure that my video would be encouraging, inspiring, and motivating. Because if not, then I would feel like I've robbed you, robbed you of your time. Time is a precious resource, and we only have a certain amount of it, and we only have a certain amount of it. When those 24 hours in a day are up, it's up. And when that year behind that dash is up, it's up. You don't get to have more time than that 24 hours. And you don't get to have more time when your time has come to an end. So I really want you to use your time wisely. And I try extremely hard to use my time wisely as well. 
So I want these videos not just to maybe help you see how you can organize or do things differently or maybe see what works for other people. Um, but ultimately, the goal of these videos is to draw your heart back, back to Yahweh, back to God. Because at the end of the day, that's what matters. I don't care how clean your house is, the physical building, if the temple internally is not clean. I'd rather live in a shack and have a beautiful temple than to live in a mansion and have a filthy temple. We are the temples of the Most High. It's important what we eat, what we see, what we hear, how we treat our brothers and sisters, how we let our light shine, how we use the things that we have been entrusted with. So I appreciate you taking the time to watch. And I hope that something that was said or done would be a blessing to you. I'm going to say a quick prayer. I'm going to let you enjoy the rest of your day. It may be that no more of my videos will be this way. It might be that the rest of them will be this way. However I'm led, I follow. I want to be spirit led. So thank you, Holy Spirit, for this time, for this opportunity and space to share with my friends your words. May your words be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Would you direct us? Would you guide us? Would you lead us? Would you give us clarity? Would you give us direction? Would you fill us with your presence? Would you fill us with a desire to know you? To know you in a deeper way? You're not the God of old, but you are here with us. Living, breathing, you're not a fairy tale, but you are living. May our lives shine for you. Thank you for this time. Thank you for this space. Show us your will for our lives. Show us how to be the best keepers of our homes, the best moms, the best wives, the best friends. Help us with the places we hurt. Help us with the grief or pain or trials or storms. Help us with any challenges we may face and give us your peace as only you can do. Thank you for your love your love that covers a multitude of sin. Thank you for your love that covers and restores. Thank you for your love that'll leave the 99 just to find the one. Thank you for your goodness, for your grace, for your mercy, for your kindness unto us. We love you. We give you glory, honor, and praise. In Yeshua's name we pray, amen.